Hey everyone, your number one tech Mark here again to give you another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to cover how to add new sales items and how to set up your default invoice. So the first thing you want to do is add your sales items. You would go to setup, then go down to invoices, and then you choose add edit sales item. Now this is going to bring up a list of every sales item that you've ever entered within your program. I'm going to go ahead and check the box keep list open. That way when we accept or we add new, it's going to leave this list so we can continue to do that. So if you're adding new sales items because the one that you want isn't listed here, you would click add new and then you're able to add in your sales item. The name of the sales item is just for your own internal purposes. It's just something that you can look at. The name is not going to print anywhere on your invoices for your client. So your clients will never know what you've named this. Uh, the description, that is what your client will actually see on your invoice. You want to make sure that that's what you want them, uh, whatever this fee is actually for. Uh, and then you have your rate, and you can list whatever rate you want. And then you would just have, you know, you leave it inactive so that this is an active sales item. Your tax, if you want them, and if you want this sales item to show on your affidavit, uh, if you have that enabled, then you could check that box as well, and then you would just hit accept. Now, you're going to have to refresh this list. If you notice that it didn't just populate in here, if you use the two asterisks, which is your wild card, well, now you see this new fee that I just added in here, okay, of $25. You could continue to add new sales items and continue to do that for every sales item that you wanted to add. When you're finished, you would just click cancel. Now, after you set up all of your sales items within the program, you're able to edit your default invoice. So to set up your default invoice, you go to set up, go to invoices, and then the first option, add edit default invoice. This is going to bring up a list of every default invoice that you've ever entered into PST. You can enter in multiple default invoices if you wanted, you know, one client to have this invoice, a different client to have a different invoice, so on and so forth. You could add as many different default invoices as you want and select them on individual client records. So you could just hit accept on one of these if you wanted to edit the existing default invoice or if you wanted to add a new one, maybe for a new client with different rates, you could just click add new. And now we're adding a new default invoice. The name of this invoice can be maybe the invoice for the client if it's a specific one for the client. Uh, maybe it's just kind of a general name, but that's what, the, that's what you're going to choose when you are choosing it on a client record. If you look up in the left corner, we've got line items. And if you drop that down, you have different choices here. You can add sales items to this invoice. Now that's going to bring up that same sales item list that we were just in with the list of every sales item that you've ever entered. And that's why it's important to just, you know, add those in so that you can just continue through. If there's a new one, though, you are able to add new from this window directly in your default invoice uh, window. Uh, so you could just add in whatever sales items you wanted, multi-service fee, and then you could add in your service fee statewide, so on and so forth. You see the rates are coming over here. Now, however you leave this window is how the invoice will appear when you add a new job for any client record that this default invoice is assigned to. And then you can see the different line items that you have. You can add your sales item, credit, and delete line just like you would on any normal invoice. You can add in a payment section if you wanted to add that into the default invoice section. And then, of course, you have your totals block, which probably should be amount due of zero unless you wanted to automatically have a quantity, say, in the service fee statewide when you enter in the new job, which is fine. And again, when, however you leave this window, when you hit accept, that is how the invoice will appear on a new job whenever you've chosen this specific default invoice for a client. So now I'm going to hit accept, and then I'm actually going to choose the XYZ default invoice on a client record. So I accepted that. Now I've saved it. So now I just need to open up a client record. So set up client and then add edit client. I can type in my two asterisks for my wild card. I'll bring up my mark test client record. And then right here in the default invoice section, I've got standard rates right now. Well, I want to change that. 
I've dropped that list and boom, I have a list of my default invoices. It's going to show me every default invoice that I have. Well, this is the one I want. It's named XYZ. I accept. And now that's taken care of. So now as I add a job for this client record, when I get to the invoice window, it's going to have that same default invoice I just created for the XYZ. That concludes the how to add a sales item and new default invoice.